In this example, now we have three-dimensionality in the ring. We see that one methyl's out, one methyl is back. So this is going to kind of lock us into how we draw these groups on the chair. So like we did before, let's start by numbering our ring. You can start anywhere, um, and I'm just going to number clockwise starting right here. Now, draw both chair conformations, and then let's set carbon 1. And like we did in that last example, you can set carbon 1 anywhere on the chair, but I like to be consistent, and for me, I usually just set carbon 1 as this carbon, and then after the ring flip, it flips down, and it's that carbon. If you're consistent, then you can always get this correct. So carbon 1. Since our original ring was numbered clockwise, number the chair clockwise. And we'll number our other chair clockwise. Okay, so now let's put in our substituents. And they're both methyl groups. So on carbon 1, we have a CH3. And on carbon 2, we have a CH3. Let's go to carbon 1 and draw in both the axial and equatorial substituents. Here's my axial. Here's my equatorial. What you want to do is relate the 3D in your flat structure to your chair. So that means if a group is out or on a wedge, put it up on the chair. If a group is back or on a dash, put it down on a chair. So in carbon 1, our methyl group is an out group. So then when we put that on the chair onto carbon 1, the out should be the up group. And the axial is the up group. The hydrogen is the down group. Again, if you're having trouble seeing that, just draw a flat plane on that carbon and look what's pointing above and below the plane. Since the methyl is now the up group, so out goes to up, the other group, the equatorial, must be the hydrogen. You don't have to draw that in, but you can. Then we get to carbon 2, we have another methyl group. In this case, it's back. Well, on carbon 2, if you draw your axial, it's straight down because that's a down carbon. Your equatorial is up. So you need to figure out which is which. Well, the back group should end up down on that carbon. And then the other group is the hydrogen that you don't have to draw in, but you can. So here's our first chair. And check your work. If you look at your original structure, we talked about cis and trans relationships. These two groups are trans. They're on opposite sides. Well, even on the chair, if you think about the planes of the carbons, one CH3 group is up one is down, it's still trans. And you need that to be the case for it to be correct. Now when we do the ring flip on carbon 1, the methyl group goes from axial to equatorial. Here's your axial group on 1, your equatorial group on 1, the hydrogen will be the axial, the methyl becomes equatorial after the ring flip. On carbon 2, here's our axial and our equatorial. The methyl group goes from axial to equatorial, and then the hydrogen becomes the axial group. Now, if you look at these, still at the plane of the carbon, the blue methyl is still up. The green methyl 
is down below that plane, so it's still down. And the two groups are still trans. So everything's correct there. So the last thing to do is just figure out which of these chair conformations is more stable. And in the second conformation, both of our large methyl groups are equatorial. So that means this chair conformation on the right is the most stable chair.